No ship in the history of the Federation, in the history of the Alpha Quadrant, has inspired more terror in the eyes of its beholders than the Borg Cube. The primary multi-role warship of the Borg Collective, Borg Cubes make up the grand majority of the Borg Armada, and are the primary means by which the Borg spread across the galaxy and assimilate new races. A single cube was more than capable of assimilating all elements of civilization on a planet, and more often than not, defeating a civilization's defenses and fleets single-handedly. The standard 24th century Borg cube is exactly 3,040 meters in both length, width, and height. The Borg feel no need for aesthetics or style in their designs, and their mastery of transwarp travel eliminates the need for warp nacelles. The Borg instead prefer simple geometric shapes for all of their ships, maximizing internal space to house countless Borg drones. Borg cubes are impressively well armed, boasting 46 adaptive weapons arrays, 12 focused neutron beam banks, 24 tractor beam emitters, and a pulse cannon designed to deplete a target's shields. In battle, the Borg are direct and relentless. They will approach a target vessel, hold it in place with tractor beams, and begin to surgically extract useful technology and personnel with cutting beams and transporters. The Borg's primary goal is the assimilation of technology and organic life. To this end, the standard Borg cube carries up to 130,000 drones, many of which would be deployed onto a hostile ship once disabled to begin harvesting and converting it. Borg cubes are also incredibly resilient, carrying powerful regenerative shields and heavy hull armor. It was estimated by Commander Elizabeth Shelby that a cube could remain functional even if 78% of it were rendered inoperable. Borg ships are capable of both warp and transwarp speeds. A Borg cube can project its own transwarp aperture to travel faster than the limitations of warp drive, or travel faster still by making use of one of the collective's network of transwarp corridors and hubs. The interior of a Borg cube is laid out very differently to that of most starships. They have no specific bridge, living quarters, or engineering section, with all vital systems instead being spread throughout the ship. This meant that it was very difficult to inflict critical damage on a Borg cube in combat, as it lacked any one vital area that could be targeted to disable the ship. The hallways of Borg cubes were lined with alcoves where Borg drones can regenerate when not needed for immediate tasks, and at the center of the cube was the vinculum, a large crystalline processor which interconnected the minds of all the ship's drones, purging all individuality and disseminating information relevant to the Collective. The officially publicized first contact between the Federation and the Borg Collective came in 2365, when the USS Enterprise D encountered a Borg cube in System J-25. One year later came the darkest day of the United Federation of Planets, the Battle of Wolf 359. In response to attacks by the Borg on outlying Federation colonies, and in an attempt to halt a Borg advance towards Earth, a fleet of 40 Federation starships, supported by elements of the Klingon Defense Force, engaged a single Borg cube in the Wolf 359 system. The battle was a bloodbath. The Borg cube effortlessly carved through the Federation fleet, destroying or assimilating everything in its path. Ultimately, 39 starships were destroyed or assimilated, with over 11,000 lives lost, including that of Vice Admiral J.P. Hansen. Only a handful of races have ever been able to seriously defend themselves against a Borg cube, and they remain one of the most formidable spacecraft in the known galaxy. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. And if there's a particular spacecraft you'd like to see looked at, let me know in the comments below and I'll get right on it.